Hello, friends. Do you like treasure hunts? And have you ever succeeded in finding the treasure? When our children were small, they would sometimes make a birthday gift more exciting by hiding them somewhere in the house. And then they would place a trail of clues for the birthday boy or girl. One morning, in fact, we woke up to find the whole house was like a spider's web. That's because my oldest son had made a string trail all around the house for his little brother to follow. So God also prepared a treasure for us, a priceless treasure that could change our lives forever and make us richer than we could ever imagine. But he hid this treasure and then he laid clues for us to discover. Some of the clues he planted thousands of years ago. Let's see if you can follow the clues right up to the treasure. By the way, anyone can take the treasure if they get to it. It's not just the first person who reaches who will get it. Keep a pen and paper handy and note down the letters that appear in red. You also take points if you know the answer, but make a note of the letters that appear in red. Are you ready? So the first clue, King Melchizedek offered Abraham these. Bread and wine. This was the first reading for today. Please note down E. Clue number two, when the Israelites were in Egypt and Moses came to set them free, they had to kill this and put its blood on their doorposts. A spotless lamb. Note down A. Does this remind you of some other spotless lamb? Does it remind you of Jesus? His blood also flowed onto the wooden post. So all these things that happened thousands of years ago were actually clues to what was going to happen. Clues to the treasure. Clue number three. The Israelites ate this lamb, which they had killed, with bread that had no five letters, no yeast. Or if you wrote 11, that's also right. You note down S. After Moses took them through the Red Sea and brought them out and they were in the desert, the Israelites were hungry and God fed them with manna, which they called bread from heaven. Because it would just appear on the ground every morning when they went to get it. It was their daily bread. Does that remind you of something that Jesus said? Jesus taught us to ask our Father for our daily bread. Clue number five, Jesus worked a miracle. This is today's gospel. And he fed 5,000 people with two, two fish and five loaves of bread. This again is a clue because later Jesus is going to feed thousands and billions of people with some miraculous bread. Clue number six. Soon after this happened, people started talking to him about bread and saying, Jesus, uh, you gave, God gave us manna in the desert. What about you? Are you going to give us manna every day? 
And Jesus said, I am the something bread that came down from heaven. I am the living bread that came down from heaven. If anyone eats this bread, he will live forever. Better than manna. Clue number seven. Jesus told a story about a king who invited everyone, rich and poor, to the wedding something of his something. To the wedding feast of his son. So Jesus is talking about a feast and about the king's son. Does that make you think of somebody? Of some kind of feast? Clue number eight, the last one and the best clue. At his last meal, Jesus took the bread and the something of something and said, this is my body, this is my blood. Take it and eat it and drink it. And the answer is the cup of wine. Write down C and U. Okay, so now you've got all your nine letters. Can you unjumble them? The treasure is hidden in the... Anyone got the answer? E, U, C, H, A, R, I, S, T. In the Eucharist. And what is this treasure? It is the body and blood of Jesus. It is Jesus himself. Today we celebrate the feast of the body and blood of Christ. Why did I say this treasure is hidden? It's because we can't see Jesus. The bread and wine look and feel and taste like bread and wine. And, but it is really Jesus. It is the son of God, the almighty God, who has made himself into a little piece of bread and a little wine. How do we believe such an impossible thing? The main reason is because Jesus said it himself and Jesus is the truth. He doesn't tell lies. He said, this is my body. This is my blood. Sometimes I wonder, why does Jesus hide himself? Why doesn't he just make the uh, bread and wine glow, let light shine or let his face appear in it? I don't know the answer. Maybe he wants us to search for him and to love him and believe in him, even though we can't see him as a person. I'd like to tell you a short story about a young girl who recognized Jesus in the Eucharist and fell in love with him. This girl's name was Catherine. When she was just a child, she gave her heart to Jesus. And she said, Jesus, I will be your bride and I'll never marry anyone else. When she grew up, she would spend her time in her parents' house in a small little room which she made into her little chapel. She would spend hours and hours talking to her bridegroom, Jesus. And then Jesus told her, Catherine, go and look after the sick people for me. And Catherine was very happy to do this. She would lovingly take care of those whom nobody else wanted to even touch or go near. Catherine really loved the Eucharist. She loved Holy Communion because she knew for sure that it was Jesus himself. And after receiving Jesus, every time she received Holy Communion, 
she would fall down unconscious and lie on the ground for hours. And she was in ecstasy. She was very, very happy and very close to him. One day, a rich lady said to her friends, this lady, the sister Catherine is a fake. She's just pretending so that everyone will think she's holy. Watch me, watch me. So she went up to the communion rail where Catherine was lying unconscious and pretended to pray. Then she took her hat pin, which was long and sharp like a knife, and slyly poked it into Catherine's foot. Blood gushed out of the wound. But Catherine didn't budge. She just kept lying on the ground with a sweet smile on her face. Only after hours when she woke up, she cried out in pain. For seven years before her death, Catherine stopped eating completely. The only thing that entered her mouth was Holy Communion. But somehow, by a miracle, she didn't get tired or weak. In fact, every afternoon after she received Jesus, she would get stronger. Catherine died when she was 33 years old, the same age as Jesus. And now we know for sure that she is happy with her beloved bridegroom. What about us? Do we believe that Jesus is really present in the holy body and blood? Though we can't see him with our eyes, do we try to see him and talk to him in our hearts? Listen to what Jesus said to Saint Faustina, another young sister who loved him. He said, No, my daughter, that when I come to a human heart in Holy Communion, my hands are full of all kinds of graces which I want to give to the soul. But souls do not even pay attention to me. They leave me to myself and busy themselves with other things. Oh, how sad I am that souls do not recognize love. They treat me like a dead object. Consider my love in the Blessed Sacrament. Now Jesus is telling us what to do. Here I am entirely yours, soul, body, and divinity, as your bridegroom. You know what love demands. One thing only. Reciprocity. Reciprocity, which means giving back, exchange, not just taking, but also giving. Friends, I spend a little time, ask the Holy Spirit to help you find this treasure, this wonderful treasure that God has prepared for us from the beginning. Ask him to help you to discover him, to recognize him, and to just love him, even though you can't see him. Pause the video and spend some time quietly. Something to do this week. Whoever's good at Googling, search for Eucharistic miracles. There are some uh, Eucharistic miracles scientifically proven. And in, together, share what you find with one another. This will help you to grow in your faith and realize Jesus is truly present. So if you'd like to comment, you can click on the blue link and that will take you to YouTube. And if you can think of someone who would appreciate and will um, benefit from this, share it with someone else. Bye from Family Faith Time.